Hey, what's up guys? It's Sports Blitz here and we're back with another NFL mock draft. Today we're only going to be doing one round with no trades. Um, before we get into it, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. We're only 82 subs away from 1,000 subscribers. So if you could help me out and reach that goal, that'd be super appreciated. Um, appreciate all the support I've been getting lately. Um, I do want to say also before we get into this, Guys, if there's a pick you disagree with, it's okay to say that in the comments. But if you come at me in a rude way, I'm either just going to ignore your comment or I'm going to remove it. Okay? I, I, I do these mock drafts for fun so that, you know, we can all just talk about football, talk about our favorite prospects and such. You don't need to come at me and say, you know, this guy do doesn't do his homework. He... You know, he, he doesn't know anything. Because, guys, I spend a lot of time watching film and studying teams' needs. I pour a lot of time and effort into this. So, if you guys could, uh, you know, really help me out and subscribe th and like the video, that would be super appreciated. But let's go ahead and get into it with the Jaguars' first pick. And I'm going to switch it up this time. I'm going to go ahead and go Evan Neal. Um... Jags fans specifically were really tearing me up for uh, really everything in that seven round mock draft. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a lot of them were just saying, "No, we don't want we don't want Aiden Hutchinson. We need to protect Trevor Lawrence." And while I fully agree with that, I also think there's a chance that they could bring back Cam Robinson. And guys, give Walker Little a chance. He he's he, he, he was one of the top prospects back in 2019, or sorry, it's 2020, the the, tw the 2020 draft. But he got injured, and that kind of set him back. But he's a he's a good player. Give him a chance. Um, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go Evan Neal right here to appease those Jags fans. Um, always good to switch it up too. So the Lions land Aiden Hutchinson from Michigan. <coughs> wants to go through there we go um then here for the texans since evan neal is off the board um i think yeah to be smart to really protect davis mills but i'm not sure how much i could really say akeem Aquonu or laramie tunsil can play right tackle just because we haven't seen akeem Aquonu play it um i mean i'm sure he'd be serviceable right there um, but it's kind of a matter of, do you want serviceable or do you want Kayvon Thibodeau or Kyle Hamilton? I think getting a guy like Kyle Hamilton would absolutely 100% help that franchise, like, a ton. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go with Kyle Hamilton right here, but I also wouldn't rule out Kayvon Thibodeau at all. Um, but then we're going to go ahead and actually have... Um, the Jets take Kayvon Thibodeau, get that get that star pass rusher they were wanting. Plus, they'll have Carl Lawson back next year, so that pass rush should be getting a lot better if this happens. Um, here for the Giants, now Andrew, <coughs> excuse me, now Andrew Thomas had a really good year at left tackle, and he's one I honestly could see playing right tackle. I think he could be pretty solid. At right tackle um so then we're gonna go ahead and give them akima kwonu to play on the left side and immediately their tackles are so much better their, their, their offensive line in general is so much better with getting akima kwonu um then here with carolina panthers on the board um the top two <coughs> the top two tackles are no longer on the board i think number six is probably a little bit high for charles cross i think I think he should be taken more in the um, probably 10 to 17 range. Um, so I think it may be a little bit early for him. So instead, I think we're going to go ahead and have the Panthers take quarterback Kenny Pickett from Pittsburgh. Um, I really like this kid's mechanics. He actually reminds me a lot of Justin Herbert. Um, I'm worried about his hand size just because that could cause fumble issues. But as long as he trains himself to hold on to the ball better, 
I don't think it should be a big concern. So I think the Panthers would be really smart to get Kenny Pickett if Evan Neal and Akima Kwonu are off the board. Then the Giants are back on the board, and we are going to go with an interior offensive lineman this time. We're going to go ahead and snag Tyler Linderbaum from Iowa. Um, I feel like a lot of the drag or the Giants um, interior off or the Giants offensive line issues come from the interior. Um, I feel like if you snag Tyler Linderbaum right here, that helps immensely. He he's a blue chip prospect. I don't understand why he's not being talked about more in the top ten. I get positional value, but at what point do you just say? Okay, this dude is too good of a prospect. We can't pass him up. I think I think he's very worth it right here. Um, then here for the Falcons, um, they need some edge help. Um, I'm going to go ahead and snag George Karloftis from Port Purdue here. I almost said Purdue. Um, then here from the for the Broncos, we're going to go ahead and give them Matt Corral from Ole Miss. I, I really like this kid. I think he's probably the most... NFL ready quarterback right now. Um, I think he has a pretty decent upside. <coughs> um, so I think he's the safest pick, especially where the Broncos are really wanting to win now. So I think that's a good pick for the Broncos. Then for the Jets, with them being on the board again, um, you know, I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure I know the full situation with um, with Morgan Moses. I'm not sure if they... Because isn't he set to be a free agent this year? I'm not sure they've re-signed him or anything like that. Um, I guess for that reason, we're going to go ahead and stay away from tackle just because I don't know exactly what the situation is. I know for sure they need some interior offensive line help. Go ahead and get another guard to complement Elijah Vera Tucker. And I'm going to go ahead and take Kenyon Green right here. I think he's an absolute stud and could really help out the, the Jets to protect Zach Wilson. Um, then the Washington football team is on the board. I'm going to be very bold right here. And I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and have them take Malik Willis. Malik Willis, I get he's not ready yet. He's still very raw. He has a lot of stuff to work on. But he has the highest upside out of any quarterback in this class by a long shot. I feel like if teams continue to pass on him, it's going to be another Lamar Jackson situation. Like from 2018, Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson we're really the only like absolute stud quarterbacks that are working out now. And a lot of people had them as their bottom two quarterbacks for the first round, you know. So I think if you pass on Malik Willis, I, I, I think you're gonna regret it long term. He's he's gonna be a good player. Um, for the Vikings, I'm gonna go ahead and have them take Derek Stingley from LSU. I think he's the best corner in the draft. I think I think he's gonna be absolutely, sh <coughs> excuse me, absolutely locked down in the NFL. I, I'm, I'm excited to watch him. I really am. And then here for the Browns again, they've said they commit to Baker Mayfield for the, um, for the 2022 season. So I say, <coughs> I say we need to give him some weapons. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give them wide receiver Garrett Wilson from Ohio State. I think he's the best receiver in this class. Then we have the Baltimore Ravens. Um, I've mentioned so many times before, guys, I know Alejandro Villanueva is not a good tackle at all, and they really need to replace him. But you've got to look at scheme. The Ravens very much run a heavy zone run scheme. Um, they're not really like a play action pass type of scheme. They don't they don't really try to throw the ball a lot. Like if they could run the ball all game, they could. <coughs> um, I like Charles Cross. I just don't think he fits the scheme. I don't think he's powerful enough to be what the Ravens want right here. 
So we're going to look in a different spot. I think we're going to go ahead and actually take... Ooh. Who, who do we want to take right here? You know what, guys? Okay. I am a huge fan, and I know you guys are going to see the board and be like, No, that's way too late. Well, hold up. Hold up. So actually, I think we go ahead and take... I know this is a weird move to a lot of people. I think we're going to go ahead and take David Ajabo. My reason for that is... Guys, I know they need corner help. But I very much think they're going to re-sign Marcus Peters. I feel like... I feel like that's his best fit there. I feel like they really like him there. Um, him and Marlon Humphrey complement each other really really well and you got to realize he was injured this entire season so you bring him back like okay even if he wasn't injured this season the Ravens pass defense would be miles better miles better than it really was so I feel like they're going to go ahead and resign him so I don't think corner will really be a big need what I am going to do is go ahead and have them take David Ajabo, and the reason for that is their defensive ends are really getting old. Um, Calais Campbell, I believe, is 38 now, something like that. He's getting really old, um, and so is Justin Houston. He is also um, very old for an edge rusher. So I think it would be smart to get younger at that position. Um, David Ajabo is a very, very talented um, edge rusher. And really, if they choose to do so, they could probably drop him back in coverage if they need, since he is more of an outside linebacker for an edge rusher. So um, moving on to the Eagles, um, they have back-to-back -back picks. With the first one, going to take Devin Lloyd. Eagles fans already know what it's about. I've explained this multiple times. He's a perfect fit for them. I just, I love this kid. I love Devin Lloyd. Um, Eagles fans definitely know what it's about by now. Um, then we're going to go ahead and actually have them take Andrew Booth. Um, I've explained before, I really don't think he's that far off Derek Stingley. And especially if he falls to the number 16 pick, that's an absolute steal. Um, I get he's had some injury concerns. But when he's healthy, he's an absolute baller. Um, and I think really his health concerns are really the only reason he would fall to number 16. Um, but I really don't think there's going to be concerns. I think he'll test. I think he'll test out well at the combine. Teams won't be quite as afraid to get him. And if he does fall to the Eagles right here, they get an absolute steal to help out Darius Slay, who in my opinion was a top three corner this year. I think it's absurd that he didn't make the Pro Bowl. Just going to put that out there. Um, then here for the Chargers, I'm going to go ahead and give them Jordan Davis. I really think they need some interior defensive line help. I don't think Jerry Tillery and Linval Joseph are really cutting it. I think they're being gashed in the run too much. Um, so we're going to go ahead and give them Jordan Davis from Georgia. Then the Saints, I think they should stick with James Winston and build around him more. We're going to go ahead and give them Jameson Williams from Alabama, give him a really, really good deep threat. <coughs> then we got the Eagles on the board again. And what we're going to do right here is actually now give Jalen Hurts a weapon. And I like... I'm not sure if I want to go Chris Olave or Traylon Burks right here. Um, I think they're both extremely talented receivers. Um, I guess Eagles fans, take your pick of which one you think is better. I think we're going to go ahead and right now go Chris Olave, but don't sleep on Traylon Burks. The dude is a stud. Um, then the Steelers are on the board right here. They need a quarterback. Um, ben Roethlisberger likely played his last game as a Steeler yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and give them Sam Howell from North Carolina. I think he's also pretty NFL ready. I don't 
like his ceiling. I don't think he has the potential ceiling to be, you know, like a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. Um, but he'll be solid enough that he can he can really help the Steelers win some games. Um, then the Patriots are on the board now at number 21. We are going to go ahead and give them <coughs> wide receiver Traylon Burks. Um, like I was saying just a minute ago, don't sleep on this kid. He is an absolute stud. Um, I think Mac Jones could very much use some receiver help. He had receivers dropping balls in that Buffalo game. Not that there was really enough to make a huge difference because, you know, they allowed 47 points, but still, some of the, some of his receivers were dropping balls. Traylon Burks could instantly come in and be their number one wide receiver. Then here for the Raiders, we're going to go ahead and give them, we're going to give them to Marvin Leal from Texas A&M. I've been saying I think they need interior defensive line. I, I want to very much clarify, they don't need edge rusher help, okay? Max Crosby is an absolute monster, and Yannick Ngakwe really isn't bad either. They don't need edge help. They need specifically interior defensive line help. They get DeMarvin Leal. Their run defense instantly gets miles better. Um, then the Arizona Cardinals are on the board now. I'm going to go ahead and give them a mod Gardner. I think he is definitely the best corner remaining on the board. I could see him honestly going in the top 20. So I think it's definitely um, a good pick for the Cardinals here. <coughs> and then the Cowboys are on the board. I also think they could use some corner help opposite of Trayvon Diggs. Um, guys with Kyrie Lom still on the board right here. Because I actually have him higher than Roger McCreary. McCreary's really good, don't get me wrong. But I like Kyrie, Kyrie Lom a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and go Elam right here. I think that'll really help out the Cowboys secondary. Um, then we've got the Bengals right here on the clock. And we are going to get an absolute steal with Charles Cross. I mentioned before with, when the Ravens were on the clock, yeah, they, they may be able to benefit a little bit off getting Charles Cross. He's probably still going to be better than Alejandro Villanueva. But he doesn't fit their system super well. He does fit the Bengals system super well. Charles Cross is probably the best strictly pass blocker in in the draft um he may struggle a little bit against some of the you know power rushers in the league um some of them some of the heavier defensive ends but against like the speedier edge rushers like brian burns hassan reddick um you know guys like that that are really speedy Charles Cross is going to do well. I think that's a really good fit for the Bengals. And getting him at 25, that's an absolute steal. You you cannot be upset about that. Um, and then for the Dolphins, at pick number 26, I'm going to go ahead and give them Trayvon Walker from Georgia. Go ahead and help out their pass rush. Um I think wide receiver is on the table right here. They could definitely get a wide receiver, um, but I feel like there's enough good receivers in free agency that I feel like the Dolphins would prefer to go that route and then get, you know, a pass rusher in the draft. That's just my thoughts on it. Who knows exactly what's going to happen? It hasn't happened yet, so. But that that that's just my take on it. Um, then the Bills are on the board here at number 27. I'm going to go ahead and give them... I'm going to go ahead and give them Roger McCreary specifically because we don't know if... Um, yeah, I don't know exactly if they'll be able to re-sign Levi Wallace. Um, he's had a really good year, so I don't know if they really are going to be able to afford to re-sign him. Um, I'll be honest, when it comes to specifically like these mock drafts, I haven't 
paid quite as much attention to each team's salary cap just because, you know, really until free agency starts, we're not going to study the salary cap too terribly much. Um, but, yeah, if they if they aren't able to get Levi Wallace back, um, which there's a good chance they won't, I think Roger McCreary would be an absolute stud right here. Um, then the Lions are on the board. I'm going to go again with Nakobe Dean. I've explained this <coughs> this pick a few times. Um, he's he's a tough he's a tough linebacker. Um, again, I think he's a perfect fit for Dan Campbell's system. He's exactly what Dan Campbell wants. You know, tough, nitty gritty player. Um, especially being a captain in the middle of that defense, like I think that's a perfect fit. I really do. I like that a lot. Um, for the Chiefs here, we are going to go ahead. I think we're going to actually give them Daxton Hill this time. Um, I think Daniel Sorensen is not as good as he used to be. Um, I think you got to give Tyron Matthew some other help. And really, the Chiefs actually like to run a lot of three safety sets. They're really the only team in the league that I've really seen do that recently. But yeah, they like to run a lot of three safety sets. So even if Daniel Sorensen is still there, Daxton Hill can be an absolute monster of a third safety. Um, so I really like that, that a lot. I think that'll help their secondary quite a bit. Um, and then here for the Bucks, let's see what corners are still on the board. Uh, I think... I think it'd be a little bit early for Trent McDuffie. Um, we're gonna go ahead and give them Jaquan Brisker, actually, because, um, I mean, yeah, Antoine Winfield is a stud. Um, Jordan Whitehead <coughs> really isn't terrible, but they could definitely use some help. I feel like, um, I feel like their pass defense is really the only like real weak spot of that team um and granted once the corners get healthier it's not even going to be a huge weak spot but you get Jaquan Brisker to help out Antoine Winfield and that secondary is going to be flying around but then here for the um for the Titans we are going to address offensive line and guys Call me absolutely insane. I know for a lot of people, this is going to be a reach. <clears throat> okay, I know it for sure. We're going to go ahead and give the Titans Daniel Falele from Minnesota. Okay, this dude is six foot nine, 380 pounds, and just an absolute mauler of a run blocker. That's exactly what Derrick Henry needs. I, it, it's a perfect fit. Like I, I get that he's a projected like mid second rounder. So you know a lot of people are gonna say this is a reach. I don't. I don't think he'll be there at the Titans' second round pick. So they kind of have to take him right here if they, if they want him. And I. I, I think he's an absolute beast. Um, then here for the Packers, um, they have a couple options right here. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and go Jermaine Johnson. Go ahead and address the pass rusher opposite of Zadarius Smith. Um, I feel like their pass rush has been a little bit lackluster this season. I get it, Zadarius Smith has actually been injured too, so that's you know that that definitely plays a part in it. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, I think I think they could definitely benefit from getting Jermaine Johnson. But that's my mock draft. Guys, let me know your opinions in the comment section below. Again, guys, it's just a mock draft, okay? We do these mock drafts to, you know, share our opinions with you guys. You guys share your opinions with ours. But don't come don't come at me in the comments in a rude way, okay? I'm just going to ignore it or even maybe delete your comment. Um I, again, I put in a lot of time to study up on these prospects, study what each team needs. I I do my homework, okay? 
Um, just because there's something you disagree with doesn't mean you have to, you know, say something, you know, rude about it. But either way, thank you so much for watching. Again, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Later.